one of the uh, one of the you, you probably read the story about uh, these four Americans who uh, traveled into Mexico. Uh, I think because one of the women there was going to get elective surgery. Um, I think uh, uh, anyway, ele some kind of cosmetic elective surgery in uh, northern Mexico, and they drove across the border and uh, to get that surgery. And uh, you know, they got uh, somehow into a conflict with the local drug lords who thought they were probably uh, a competing drug sl smuggling operation, maybe of Haitians, uh, given that they were, they were black. And so there was some, anyway, uh, the, the cartel started shooting at them, uh, ultimately killed two of them. Two were rescued and brought back to the United States, one of them uh, severely injured in the leg. Uh, this is on top of just the ongoing, constant, massive, uh, violence instigated by the drug cartels in Mexico, uh, the thousands and thousands of deaths uh, per year. Uh, and of course, this is on top of, and maybe this is all a consequence of, uh, the, the fentanyl trade and, and the, the smuggling of massive quantities of fentanyl across the Mexican border. This is a, an, an incredibly profitable trade. Fentanyl supposedly is relatively easy to produce, cheap to produce. Uh, and 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 you can you can move large quantities of it, and uh, of course it it sells for high premiums. And uh, the consequence of it, we all know, uh, overdose deaths uh, increasing dramatically, fentanyl use increasing dramatically, uh, and deaths as a consequence increasing. And of course, the United States, uh, in its wisdom, uh, you know, when they see a situation like that. Uh, they want to declare war. They want to go to war, right? Uh, so, uh, oh my God, uh, people are dying from fentanyl overdose. So let's go to war on fentanyl. Um, so, uh, you know, they, th there's one way in which we deal with these kind of issues. There's one way in which we deal with, uh, with these issues, and that's by applying more force. This is what governments do really, really well, applying more force. More money, more guns, more weapons, more troops, more walls, more fences, more force. And so there is now uh, a, a massive and, and a real push, uh, primarily among Republicans, but it's not found upon among Democrats either. But there is a real push basically uh, to, to designate, um, you know, to designate the cartels as terrorist organizations, which would, uh, I guess, it's not clear what exactly that designation would do, but it would uh, at least give uh, the, the U.S. authorities uh, the pretense of then, I guess, using violence within Mexican territory, uh, applying uh, drone technology to killing uh, Mexican cartel members and leaders of the Mexican cartel. Uh, and, and ultimately, I think, if the Mexican does, gov government doesn't do anything about these cartels, actually deploying U.S. troops inside Mexico to deal with these cartels. In other words, uh, what is being proposed and what is being proposed really, uh, you know, among pretty much every Republican candidate running for president, uh, Trump has uh, stated this as a goal. Uh, um, what's her name? Vivek has stated this as a goal. We haven't heard anything from DeSantis, so who knows what DeSantis thinks. But pretty much everybody seems to believe that the solution uh, to these drug cartels is, is to go to war with them, right? The war on drugs has been such a huge success. Um, it, it, the war on poverty has been such a huge success. America generally, its wars have been such massive success. Um, you know, throwing more force, uh, uh, more coercion, more gunfire, more death and destruction at this problem. It, since it's, it, 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 it solved all the other problems, uh, you know, defeating communists in Korea, Vietnam, you know, solving all the problems in the Middle East and bringing us democracy over there. And then, of course, uh, you know, eradicating the drug trade completely with the exception of fentanyl because a war was declared on drug. And, of course, we have no poor people because we have a war in poverty. Wars have been so damn successful the way the United States wages them that why not let's have a war in fentanyl and on Mexican drug cartels. I mean, this is, of course, insanity. Um, and, and what exactly are they going to do? Uh, we're not going to release the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, we're not going to uh, el eliminate the, the um, 
uh, rules of wars, the United States has practiced it forever. So no civilian casualties, and yet we're going to fight a war in Mexico, in Mexico's civilian uh, populations against a drug cartel. Um, we, uh, what are we going to do exactly? We're going to bomb them. We're going to, uh, with no civilian casualties, we're going to send tanks in. We're going to send actual troops in. Or we're just going to build a bigger wall, a thicker wall, a taller wall. I mean, there is significant violence in Mexico, primarily towards Mexicans. It, 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 to the extent that going into Mexico is really dangerous, Americans should just stay home. To the extent that particular, uh, particular people have killed Americans, and we know who those people are, they should be hunted down, ideally by the Mexican authorities, and persecuted, prosecuted, and persecuted. And if the Mexican authorities won't do it, then yes, the United States government should, in, it, in, in its responsibility for protecting the individual rights of Americans, go in without declaring full-on war and without trying to stop the fentanyl trade, which is insane, try to you know, punish those who have inflicted pain on Americans. But none of that is what's being proposed. What's being proposed is uh, either uh, massive intervention uh, into, into Mexico, into Mexico uh, which nobody will actually admit. All these presidential candidates, I think with except of Vivek, Vivek says, yeah, we should, we should just bomb them. We should just bomb them. We should use artillery. We should do whatever it takes to just crush them and decimate them and turn them into dust. Uh, you know, we could, God forbid, I, I don't want to sound like a real radical, and, and, and really crazy, we could take away their monetary support. We could, we could actually, uh, you know, take away the profit motive from the drug trade, from the cartels by uh, decriminalizing fentanyl, by legalizing it. By the way, somebody said, oh, fentanyl is already legal. No, it's not. Fentanyl, a certain variation of fentanyl is legal in hospitals uh, under careful monitoring uh, and, but, but fentanyl, the kind of fentanyl that's sold in the streets, synthetic fentanyl, fentanyl and the kind of fentanyl uh, 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 sold to anybody, that is not legal in the United States. Indeed, that's why cartels are involved, because it's not legal. Profit margins are massive. I mean, but it makes good television. I mean, for, for, for these people to go on television and say, yeah, we want to war on the cartels, we want to declare the cartels terrorist organizations, we want to start killing them off. We are, yeah, I mean, that sounds fantastic. What's the plan? Are you really willing to go to war with Mexico if Mexico government doesn't cooperate? No, I think they should. It's under Mexico. This government that all this violence is happening, Mexico should be doing something to eradicate the violence. I'll do a story, probably not today, about El Salvador and what El Salvador is doing in terms of violence and how much the violent rate has come down dramatically, but, but not today. Um, I mean, God, all this is is, is uh, Republicans and Democrats and uh, Republican presidential candidates flexing muscles in, in some kind of pretend that they can solve uh, the drug war that is being waged since the days of Richard Nixon with really zero success, zero success. But if you legalize fentanyl, you import it legally across the border, prof, you dry up all the, all, the, all the profits, dry up. All the profits dry up. And the cartels basically turn in each other, I don't know to do what, but, but they're finished. Why doesn't the Mexican government take on the drug cartels? Because, you know, too many people within the Mexican government, it appears, and within the Mexican military, within the Mexican police, are, are corrupt themselves and on the payroll of the cartels. So, you know, don't pay too much attention to all these politicians, uh, you know, drumming up support for, for, for a new war uh, in Mexico. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what it would involve. They don't know what it would take. And they, they have no concept. And like all the other wars the United States has fought since World War II, we'd probably lose it. And we'd lose it for a reason, because you, the, the reality is, and I said this decade, years ago, you can't have a war against an inanimate object. 
wars against people. You can't have a war against drugs. You can't have a war against fentanyl. You can, you can have a war against cartels. You define the enemy clearly and then set out the strategy to destroy them. We could do that. But we won't because we're not, we don't have the, the strategist. We don't have the will. We don't have the, the moral and mental capabilities to actually execute a war like that that destroys them. And then for what? We'll, we'll, once the cartels are destroyed, when new cartels come around, you notice you don't hear much about the Colombian cartels anymore. Why? Well, because they've been replaced by much worse M13-style cartels in Mexico and in Central America. But cartels haven't gone away. If you defeat all the cartels and, you, and fentanyl remains illegal and demand for fentanyl remains high, all that will happen is you'll have more cartels, new cartels, different cartels, maybe in different places. And you will have spent a huge amount of money, potentially gone to war with Mexico. A bunch of Americans would have got killed doing this. A lot of Mexicans would have got killed doing this. And you'd be right back to square one. The fact is that as long as there's demand for drugs, there will be supply for drugs. As long as there's demand for drugs and you make it illegal, there will be supply of drugs and there will be a lot of casualties because that supply of drugs will be delivered through violence because you made it illegal. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.